So this is going to be a fun session. Welcome to it. Once again, if you're just getting with us, um, this is the Studio Takes Mythbusters series. I'm Dane Scott, and this month we're trying to break up some myths, talk about some urban legends, and um, in some cases some truisms that are true, in some cases some things that you can take with a grain of salt when it comes to doing voiceovers. And again, today we're talking microphones and, again, one of my very favorite subjects. And particularly, you know, if you are looking into getting a, a, a microphone, what sources should you pay attention to? Uh, what sources can you disregard? And where should you be putting the weight as you're making those decisions? And what I was hoping to do here today though right now I'm not seeing it. Just a sec. Let's see if I can pull this up. No, I'm not. Oh, drat. I'm not seeing it. Uh, what I was hoping to do was to monitor comments. Oh, I think I've got it. I think I've got it. Is this the one from earlier today? No, that's the older one. Okay. Drat. <laughs> We're trying for it. Give me just a sec. Uh, what I'm trying to do is to be able to watch for comments on my iPhone, separate from a, a computer monitor, because what I was running into, as I mentioned on a couple of the other feeds, is that the comments were not coming through in a way that allowed me to scroll through them. But now that I'm uh, set up to do this, ah, there we are. Now it's coming up. There's a little delay. There we are. So, hi, Britta. Hi, Mark. Hi, Pat. Yay, we've got it working now. I just had to be a little patient. It takes apparently a little time before it starts to come up. So we are off and running. Now, enough distractions, enough delays. Let's get to it. Talking microphones. If you already have your microphone, this might be something that you can use as advice that you can pass along. Or if a time comes when you're considering your next microphone, uh, maybe some of this will be of use. And I found an article that I'd like to start with today um, I'm going to quote a little bit from because I think it's just a kind of a nice guide. Uh, the article says, which voiceover microphone is right for you? And I love the way they put this. It really, they're kind of saying what I would have said, so I'll let them say it. As a voiceover artist, it is critical that you choose the right microphone for your voice, your room, and your budget. When it comes to determining which microphone is right for you, there's only one good way to go about making this very important decision. Before buying anything, you must listen and compare for yourself. Typically, when voice talent begin their career or begin to invest in a home studio, they choose a microphone based on one or more of the following uh, things. Advice from friends or associates, familiarity with something that they've used previously, Maybe if they came from radio, they're using an Electro Voice RE20 or something like that. Uh, or what the salesperson at the music store sells to them. Or what they can afford. Although all these factors should be taken into consideration, they serve merely as a starting point. The advice of others is helpful, but how good something sounds to one person or to one person's voice on one person's voice may not be as good for someone else. The best way... To use the advice of others is to list all the microphones they mention as possible options and then draw your conclusions from there. And they go on to talk about you know, some of the different places where we could get advice from and whether that advice is generally the thing we want to mainly pay attention to or not. Um, I think that maybe a good place to start is to actually, I've got something here that I'm going to pull up. The first time I've done this. I actually did a little, uh, yeah, I did a little slideshow for today. So let's bring this up. First time I've tried this, choosing a mic. All right, so um, I will say that mics are like shoes. I would never order a pair of shoes off the internet. Well, that's not to say you can't order a mic off the internet, but the point is that mics Mics are like shoes in the sense that they have to fit. They have to fit your feet. You know, not, well, you know what I'm saying. And so I have to try on shoes. I can't just, you know, buy a pair of shoes, sight unseen and, and uh, foot unfelt, and expect that they're going to be right for my feet. The odds are that they will not be 
Okay. So uh, mics are like shoes. Uh, there are a number of different options for microphones. Uh, you have condenser mics, like the one I have here. This is a large diaphragm condenser, and that's the direction that pretty much all, or let's say most, voiceover people go with today because of the high sensitivity and uh, the, the wonderful properties for reproducing human voice. Uh, there are also dynamic mics. These are an older style mic. They go back for, gosh, 60 years probably or more. Dynamic mics are, um, are good mics, and they can be good for voiceover, but it kind of depends on the voice. Um, if it is, uh, if it's like me, I went through so many different mics over the years, and many of them were dynamic. I had, uh, I've tried the RE20, which is a good and not an expensive microphone. The RE27ND, which is considered to be a little more high-end-ish, a little more treble in it. Um, gosh, I've used an SM7. I've used an SM5. Uh, these are electric voice mics. I've used... Uh, mics by a variety of brands. I've used different mics in different studios uh, when I've traveled to do voiceovers. Um, and I also, I used a Heil, uh, a PR50 or something like that, or PR30, which uh, is a dynamic mic that's supposed to have properties similar to a condenser mic. Um, I owned one of those for a while. I had um, also um, uh, a, an SE, 2000 I want to say and that's a that's a beautiful mic it's used very heavily in studios in Great Britain but it wasn't right for my voice um, and the way I judge that is that I need my voice to have a certain amount by the way I gotta get my microphone over a little bit here a certain amount of um, reinforcement on the high end because my mouth my voice tends to be kind of rounded and smooth so uh, using the right kind of a mic for me is important to bring out any high end any uh, overtones that are there, which otherwise would tend to be buried under a dynamic mic. There are two different styles of mics that you can get. Uh, one is a USB mic. Those tend to all be condensers these days. And that's a mic that doesn't require any kind of a special box or anything. Uh, it can be a nice way to do a starter mic uh, because all you have to do is just plug it into your laptop or your computer and it'll just automatically configure. It'll show up in your software and you can start using it. Uh, then there are also the XLR mics, and those are mics with the, the barrel-type connector on them with three prongs, and it just looks like a more professional mic, and in many cases they are more professional mics. And those require an inter, uh, interface box in order to, uh, in order to work out. Uh, they can't just be plugged directly into the computer. Uh, some considerations. Duh! I don't know what the duh was. I must have mistyped that one, uh, but um, you have to consider industry standards, uh, the recommendations of others. You should probably make a point of asking lots of questions if you're in groups uh, like our um, Rate My VoiceOver group is a good one for this kind of thing, um, and also groups where they talk about voiceover equipment. Uh, get lots and lots of comments and suggestions, uh, but do not assume that whatever mic someone else is using is the right one for you. And you need to source your mic. This is an important consideration. Get your mic from a place that takes returns, that accepts returns. Uh, the reason I say that is because it's like trying on shoes, and you may find that you listen to that mic and just, you know, gosh, I don't know, it just doesn't quite sound right for me. And there again, a place like Rate My VoiceOver is a great place to, um, if you were to do a test recording, to submit it and say, what do you guys think? Uh, all right. With all of those things said, I want, to, I want to kind of baseline this thing with a very inexpensive mic that can demonstrate the fact that you do not necessarily have to spend a ton of money in order to get into voiceovers and start doing some credible voiceovers. Um, imagine a mic that costs under $50 and can actually do the job. This is not an endorsement. It's certainly not a paid endorsement. All right, so with that said, now I'm going to try something here. Um, this is the first time I've done this. I've got a video that I've got kind of queued up here. It's a YouTube uh, review that I did, and it's just you know, maybe three minutes long. But let's go to that, see if we can make this work, 
if it if it works then we'll know that we have this uh, resource available to us for the future uh, watch this shootout between a really inexpensive mic and my fairly expensive um, Neumann mic here. Welcome to Fiverr Gold, I'm Dane Scott. I've done a lot of voiceovers over the years and I've used a lot of mics before I settled on the Neumann TLM 103, which my voice really seems to do well through. But a newfound friend turned me on to a mic this week that uh, while it might not be Neumann's equal, it is certainly impressive at 1 20th the price. We'll do a shootout side by side next. While I was interviewing VO Pro Bill DeWeese for an upcoming Udemy course called Gig Winner, a guide to creating a winning voiceover demo, Bill mentioned a mic he's pretty impressed by, especially for the price. There's a new mic that just came out, and by the way, I don't get paid for saying this, so just there's no financial incentive, but it's called a Fifine, F-I-F-I-N-E, K670, and um, it, it's 50 bucks. I actually did a video, I, I did a review on my YouTube channel about, I couldn't believe how great this thing sounded. And my son, who's an audio engineer, also reviewed it, and he was equally impressed. Um, but the specs on it and the sound are outstanding. Well, following the principle that you can never have too many microphones and the fact that I actually did need an emergency backup mic, I ordered it, and it arrived today. I didn't waste any time trying it out and thought I'd immediately do a test recording of it and of my Neumann and see how the two stacked up against each other. Unfair comparison? <laughs> probably, but I think you'll agree the Five Fine held up pretty well. Briefly, I set up each mic at the traditional hand's breadth away. I chose one as the input source first and recorded some copy. Then I got at the same angle, the same distance from the other mic and recorded the same copy again. Here's what I got. First, here's the Five Fine. The most significant event for the last 75 years that transformed and fueled manufacturing, agriculture, and the economy was World War II. The Great War finally ended, and the world was at peace. With the enemy defeated and the rebuilding of Europe at hand, the world felt a sense of security and prosperity. Now here's the Neumann. The most significant event for the last 75 years that transformed and fueled manufacturing, agriculture, and the economy was World War II. The Great War finally ended, and the world was at peace. With the enemy defeated, and the rebuilding of Europe at hand, the world felt a sense of security and prosperity. As you can tell, the Five Fine has a nice rich sound, matched the Neumann for noise floor, and could certainly be used for professional voiceovers. Would I take it over the Neumann? No, the sound isn't quite as refined and maybe has a little brassiness to it, but I think it's fair to say that if I were to fulfill orders for clients using the Five Fine, I wouldn't hear any complaints. It's a very clean sounding audio, a little bit of low end beef to the sound, and the, uh, the actual mic has a nice hefty feel to it. It comes with a weighty stand that holds it stably and even has a rubberized mat underneath to keep it from skidding around. And it has a standard mount, so that means you can screw it onto a boom style mic stand, which you might prefer because the desk stand's stem isn't really very tall. All in all, though, a pretty huge bargain for under 50 bucks, and I think it's an easy pick for somebody who's just starting out in voiceovers. Join me along with an all-star cast of VO pros for the upcoming Udemy class, Gig Winner, the voiceover demo course, where we'll hear from Bill and all of these guests. And please subscribe right now so you can get all of these tips we keep pouring forth here. See you next time. I actually didn't realize it had all that extra stuff at the end there, but there you go. So that's a little review. I couldn't actually hear it. I'll have to figure out how that part works. But it looked to me like you were getting level and, and seeing something. And so uh, we'll consider that to be good enough on that. And so now we are done with our little slideshow today. And here is... Um, I guess the point of all of that was clear enough that you can start out with something like, here it is actually, there's that little five fine. There, there it is. <laughs> I'm looking at everything backwards here. So say hello to the little five fine mic right there. It's got this little bass on it. Doesn't do a bad job. And then uh, here's an older one. 
uh, the Blue Snowball, uh, as far as USB mics go. Uh, it's really kind of cool looking. I'll tell you honestly, I don't think it sounds very good. Kind of tinny. Um, but you have to try them out. You have to see what's going to work for you. If I were to give it a choice, though, personally, between the Five Fine and the Blue Snowball, I'd go with the Five Fine any day of the week. Uh, so, But the technology is definitely coming down in price. I also found this other little article here uh, that uh, it's 17 quality voiceover microphones for home recording studio, but he's got a little summary at the top. And it mentions the Blue Yeti uh, as a kind of a starter mic. Um, the Yeti's good. Um, not superb, but good. And then there's the uh, the Rode NT1A, um, and then there's the Rode Procaster or the Shure SM7B. Uh, those, I think, in both cases, are intended. You know, they're they're not going to have the the high end that you're going to expect for most uh, voiceovers, especially the SM7B. It's going to be more round sound and but it's good if what you want to do is to avoid noise because it's a more of a directional mic and then at the higher end uh, the TLM 102 or the TLM 103 the latter is the one that I use here uh, you'll find lots and lots of reviews and information on the internet related to different kinds of mics that you can go with and uh, there are lots of options out there and it really depends on your budget so these are the things to think about what is your voice like? What is your room like? Okay. What is your budget like? What do other people like? But I would say that is probably the least consideration. And you got to weigh and balance those factors. But above all, what I suggest that you do is to come in at it with uh, the theory that maybe the first mic you buy is not going to be the one that you're going to use. Go Sweetwater is an example of a place where they've got lots of microphones, they've got uh, reasonable prices, and they allow uh, returns. So, you know, do your research. You don't want to inconvenience any vendor by, you know, just you know, willy-nilly ordering microphones and then sending them back. But, you know, maybe narrow it down to two or three that you feel confident are at least in the right ballpark for you. And then... Pick whichever you think is the most likely prospect based on your expectations and your price. Order the mic, get it in-house, sit down with about three scripts, maybe a hard sell, a soft sell, and, uh, and one other, and record those scripts in, um, a, at a certain volume level. Set your levels so that, you know, okay, it's coming up to whatever, minus 6 dB or whatever you're going to record at, minus 10 dB. Record those three scripts. Play them back for yourself. Play them back for uh, voiceover friends. Bring it over to Rate My VoiceOver uh, group on Facebook and ask them for their comments on it. And, of course, use your own judgment. See whether this shoe fits. And if you have doubts if, or if you just feel, no, I just don't like the way I sound through that thing, return it. Keep your recording you know, that you made. You're recording your test, right? So keep the recording that you made and then order number two on the list. Bring that in-house, set it up the same way, get the input level set to the same, minus six, minus 10, whatever you're going to record at. Record the same three scripts at about the same positioning, distance, whatever, from the microphone. So it's a, a good A-B comparison. And then listen again to your original recording and to the second recording. And hopefully, by the time you've tried a couple, you'll have drawn a conclusion that, you know what, I actually do kind of like the first one after all. Or, you know what, the second one's a lot better. Or, possibly, you know what, maybe I better try one other mic. In that case, you rec return the second one and record your third choice, or <laughs> order your third choice. And again, do the same thing. Yeah, record your third choice at that point. Same three scripts, same setup. And so you've got an A, B, C comparison. And there again, feel free at any point during this process to post them over on the Rate My VoiceOver group. That's what we're kind of there for. And get their feedback. See what uh, people have to say. And the odds are that they will have opinions and they'll tell you what they think. 
and you'll also have your own opinions. But by doing it that way, you're going to have a much higher confidence level that the voice uh, over mic that you choose is going to be a good one for your voice. But the most important thing of all is the custom nature of what you're doing here. Uh, your microphone needs to love your voice. And I went through, as I mentioned, a lot of different mics before I finally came to the one that uh, is my love affair mic. And that process concluded after m trying many professional mics over the years, some good quality mics, either uh, in my own studio or at other studios where I was recording. Um, I happened to be at one uh, studio uh, just down the road in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And uh, I was in the isolation booth there and uh, they had me recording my voiceover and I stepped out into the main room where they were playing it back and I was like, whoa, you know, are you using some kind of fancy processing? I think I might be mentioning something I said the other day, but it, it fits with the context of this, so I'll mention it again. Um, and he said, no, no, not really. He said, it's just, uh, you know, that's the mic uh, that you were on. So I ran in there, looked behind the, uh, the pop filter, and sure enough, it was a Neumann. And, well, that particular Neumann was about a $4,000 idea, but I found out that I could get the TLM-103, um, which would have very much the same kind of uh, sound, but just didn't have as many different uh, position options, like being able to push a switch around to get uh, little different patterns and so forth. Uh, so for about 1000 I got this uh, TLM-103, and it's been just the perfect mic for me. I just love my voice through it. And that's what you want. You want to feel confident about the microphone that you choose. And it's between you and the mic. It's not between you and a buddy or between you and a salesperson at a music store. Uh, it's not between you and someone on a YouTube video. Um, it is between you and the microphone. And that's the best way of all, in my opinion, to choose the best mic for you. We'll be doing another one of these on Friday, October 9th. Um, if you would like some coaching, I mention this each day, and I'm having so much fun with my students lately. We've got s people all over the world now that uh, just did one uh, with uh, someone in Hong Kong, uh, an English-speaking person um, who um, we just had a great session with, and um, I just enjoy the heck out of doing that. So if you'd like some voiceover coaching, I'm doing it at a discounted rate of $50 for an hour and then $40 for each half hour afterwards if we want to keep going. Um, and by that way, during this COVID situation, I'm hoping to be able to help people who are stuck at home to be able to kind of advance their, their side careers, their side gigs. So um, contact me through personal messaging if you'd like some help with voiceover coaching. All right, that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, good luck with your microphone search. Talk to you next time.